What's up everybody, Richard back today with another video. Today we're not doing a reaction video, but instead I am going over my top five albums of 2022 so far. Now at the time of this recording, if you can't read the date below the video, this is July 6th, 2022. Now, I went back into my uh, Patreon archives because if you guys don't know, I do album reactions weekly for both Patreon and for YouTube members, so make sure you join one of those. And um, so far this year, we've done 25 albums from 2022 and six EPs from 2022. So I had quite a bit to work with here. And so basically what I did is I went back and I kind of looked at the scores that I gave for each of these albums. Now, how do I give scores to albums? Well, what I do is when I'm reacting to them, I grade each song individually add them up and divide by the total number of tracks. So for example, if there's 10 tracks, the total score is 100. You add up the score, divide it by 100, there you go. I don't really grade instrumentals and I don't grade like interludes or intros, stuff like that. Um, I kind of just focus more on the songs. And so with that, I'll be honest. I mean, we have a top five albums, of course, but there hasn't been an album this year that's really like blown me away, like a brand of sacrifice lifeblood of 2021. But there are still some really fun albums that did come out this year, and we're going to dive into those right now, starting at number five. That is Bloody Wood with Rack Shack. Now, I gave this album an 83 overall, and to me, I thought that going into this album, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I heard that there was some Indian folk metal. I didn't know quite what that meant. Well, I was greeted right away by the two tracks. I believe they're pronounced Gadar and Aj. Uh, these tracks here, man, you know, uh, for Gadar, especially, you know, insanely energetic chorus. I was, you know, introduced to the rapping in uh, that first track as well, and I think that, that guy is a monster. I think that the rapper, uh, both vocalists are awesome. The rapper is sick. I think he adds a really fun uh, new metal Rage Against the Machine-y kind of uh, vibe. Um, hacktivist almost. I just think he adds a really cool element that really makes the music stand out, especially when you factor in all the elements that Bloody Wood has to offer, such as, you know, flutes, more epic uh, parts, um, insane screams and whatnot. And then Aj, like I said, we were talking about the flutes and stuff. This is where I think we're first introduced to the flute in a prominent way. It's very like epic folksy moments there, especially in the beginning of the track. You got some really fast-paced, crazy vocals from the, the screaming vocalist. But my favorite track on this record, without a doubt, is Dana Dan, and I'll tell you why. There's a line in this song that says... I put a fist to the face of a rapist And yeah, I take this for the viewing pleasure All the nameless faces in his graces And yeah I put my fist through the face of a rapist Now that right there crowns you But I mean, this song was just insanely energetic and that kind of really, you can say that about the whole album. This was a very pleasant surprise for me when I went into it. It was super heavy, kind of had like a really fun new metal edge to it. And that's why Bloody Wood ends up on the list at number five. Moving over to number four, we have Consumer and their record Obsession. Now, this was released through Out of Line Music. And I mean, listen, man, straight up, this is just a heavy ass record okay i mean it's just absolutely insane the number one track for me which if you guys are familiar with consumer you probably know this track that's selbs justice i can't i don't i'm probably pronounced that incorrectly but this is an absolute 10 out of 10 track for me it's under two and a half minutes long it's a breakdown right at the beginning And then it goes into like this kind of like uh, sample. It's like step. step. Then it goes, and then it just gets heavy again. And then it ends with another breakdown, the same breakdown as the beginning. It is just balls to the wall from beginning to end. But then also you have a track like, uh, I think it's Velt Build. I don't know how you pronounce it, but. Again, more crushing riffs here. Got a blare right there in the beginning. Just menacing vocals. I mean, straight up, like this vocalist is just an absolute monster the entire record. I just like the speed of the track uh, in, in Velt Build. And then you also get some shine for the bass in there as well. And then lastly, uh, for me, I like the track Blanc, which is the closing track. Um, you know, usually, you know, I, I've kind of made my opinions known about closing tracks. Usually they're kind of lame. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Like they're just... 
they're just kind of like, all right, this is the longest track on the record. Let's just be emotional. And this one definitely has that emotion to it. There's way more ambience in this one. Kind of sounds like a funeral with like an architect's kind of feel to it. Um, it has a long and drawn out, um, you know, closing, like a, a, an outro. And I think that this was released as a single. And I think when I first heard it, I wasn't too big of a fan of that. But understanding that it was the closer of the album, I understood a lot more and uh, really enjoyed how they wrapped up the record, kind of getting all of those elements from the album uh, in that one final track. Moving over to number three, we have Enterprise Earth, The Chosen. Now, I gave this one an 84.3. It just narrowly beat out Consumer. Uh, and this was the last album with Dan Watson, who's no longer with the band, of course. And, I mean, this album just has so many great tracks, like Skeleton Key, Reanimate, Disintegrate, Unleash Hell, My Blood, Their Satiation, Overpass. There's just a lot of great songs on this. Now, this is a longer album. And a lot of these songs are a lot longer than what I typically uh, like. You know, Skeleton Key's my favorite. That's right around the four minute mark. But, and here's my thing, man. Anytime I hear a track that has like a fade in riff, that's like, you know, that has like some energy to it, the track's going to throw down. And Skeleton Key definitely did that. This was kind of more like a, just a heavier metalcore track, if I'm being honest. And I, I really just enjoyed the just the energy of that track. But speaking of energy, we got Reanimate, Disintegrate, you know, six minute track. Again, just super crushing, cool video with like the, you know, the flames and everything. I do think that, you know, if you go back and listen to the track, you'll hear a, a breakdown towards the end that goes with a solo and then, you know, more after that. I would have ended with that breakdown, but hey, listen, it's still that track threw down. Um, Unleash Hell, you know, got some operatic moments in there, massive genty riffs, got a fun solo in there, but Overpass, you know, this is like an eight minute track, so going into it, I was like, oh god, okay, whatever, but this track features Matt Honeycutt, who's one of my favorite vocalists, and, um, you know, there was like multiple acts throughout this song, you had the clean vocals, you had the ambience, you know, kind of like a Chester, kind of Sam Cartery vocal from Dan, uh, but then really, my the highlight of the track was the Matt Honeycutt feature followed by a massive breakdown, which was overall one of the most shining moments on the album, if I'm being honest with you. Moving over to number two, we got Vatican and their album Ultra. Now, every song on here is uh, pretty short. The longest track is 335. The entire album is under 35 minutes, so I was a big fan of that, just heading into it. Uh, but I, what I, here's the thing that I, you know, I was listening to this album at first, and I was a little bit worried that we were just going to kind of get a rinse and repeat of just some standard kind of hardcore, uh, you know, just through every single track. And yeah, that's fun. But, you know, you kind of it kind of uh, kind of gets a little old after a while. But this album did not do that. You definitely had hardcore was the staple of this album. Don't get me wrong. But the way that they presented it was super cool. Like, for example, you have a track like Mirror Dream, which was my second favorite song. I uh, will talk about my favorite, but Mirror Dream really had like that Danza, Dillinger, Glass Cloud kind of feel to it. But my favorite track was, uh, it's, I, I wrote Numb, but it's N uh, period U period M period B. I can't remember exactly what that stands for, but my favorite part was just like that one uh, syncopated part where you had like the vocals kind of timed up right with it. I, I, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think that just adds so much ferocity and anger and just energy to a track. But then what I really like too is towards the end you had like that bit that that, that you know that sample, and I kind of wish that it kind of faded out, went back into that part that I was just referring to with like the uh, you know the on time vocals. But instead we kind of got like. Um, uh, uh, one more drop with the sample, which I thought was a cool way to end it. But yeah, there was like, there was, like I said, there was lots of variation in the hardcore sound, but also we kind of had some tracks that you kind of maybe wouldn't have expected if you listened to a handful of Vatican songs, one of which was Where Heavens Collide. This was kind of, you know, in that deft tones, low the kind of ness, but it, uh, it was still catchy, had some really like melancholic riffs. But what I will say about Vatican, though, is that, you know, some bands will do this where they have like that one or two tracks that are like, you know, more emotional and you're kind of like, oh, I didn't expect that from the band. Well, this these songs have that, but 
what they did, which I thought was so smart, was they still had those heavy elements mixed in there. It wasn't the shining moments of the track, but it was in there to get those listeners that love Vatican to be like, hell yeah, like I'm looking forward to that part, but I also like, the, hey, I like this new style as well. So I thought that was genius by them. And Vatican is my number two album of the year with a score of 85.3. Now at number one, this is a curveball because I just checked their Spotify before recording this video and they have actually 5,500 monthly listeners on Spotify, which is absolutely criminal. That band is grayscale season with their album, Do You Like Violence? Now, I was first turned on to this album by Rachel React. She told me to check it out. I was kind of looking for an album to check out on stream and I was like, okay, sure, whatever. Man, I was blown away. I gave this track, I mean, I gave this album an 87%. Um, this was just one of the most freshest sounding metalcore albums I've heard in a while. I'm a metalcore guy. You know, I've kind of heard a lot of the different sounds, but this is really cool. I mean, for one, I would just say the clean vocals in this, you know, factoring in a lot of falsetto, it was just a unique tone, which just really kind of set it apart from other kind of clean singers. But this album had plenty of thaw elements, beat down, hardcore, some proggy elements as well. And it helps that this album was mixed by Buster Oldholm from, you know, you got Viljarta, uh, Humanity's Last Breath, Throne. The guy is just an absolute monster. I believe one of these tracks actually features Cal, I believe that's his name. I'm uh, probably, probably butchering that, but from Humanity's Last Breath, which I believe is the track Side Effects. Um, there's 13 tracks on this record. Not really any of them are misses, like none really. I mean, they're all like really competent songs. Um, but side effects, like I was saying, which I believe is the one who features the gentleman from Humanity's Last Breath, this is just a straight beater, you know, right from the jump. It goes into a... Running, running part and it's just like you just get energized you're you're going uh you have a massive breakdown in this one but then the track ends <laughs> With like a clean guitar, some clean vocals, and an 808 sample, which is a really nice way to round out the track. I'm a big fan of F factoring 808s. You got Champagne Tears, which kind of really has like a Egyptian y kind of after the burial feel to it, but then it goes into like a body snatcher feel. You got a Thal breakdown in there as well, tough guy riffs, and then you got Pink Mist, which is that you got like a chanty kind of robot open. It's bouncy, some blast beats thrown in there. I mean, this album just had a lot of really fun elements that you don't really hear. Here. And, you know, on some metalcore records, you'll probably primarily hear one style. This one here had so many different styles, so much variety that it kept it fresh from track to track. And uh, 13 tracks I was in, man. I thought it was I thought this was an awesome record. And as of July 2022, it is my number one album of the year. So, guys, that does it. My top five albums so far through July 2022. Like I said, at number five, we got Bloody Wood. Number four, Consumer. Number three, Enterprise Earth. Number two, Vatican. And number one, Grayscale Season. So let me know in the comments what your favorite albums are this year. Like I said, none, I, 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 I will say, these are all good albums, but none have been absolutely blown me away. Like uh, like I said, like a Brandon Sacrifice has. So I'm looking forward to this latter half of the year to see what we get but again let me know in the comments what you think and until the next one i will see you later make sure you check out the patreon make sure you become a youtube member my merch music all that stuff you guys know the deal those links are down below in the description and until the next one peace